In this lecture, we're going to talk about the monthly changes that happen in the sky because of Earth's orbit around the sun. This will get you prepared for the lecture tutorial called Seasonal Stars. If you were to go outside, say, at midnight on January 1st, you'd see that stars that are high up above your southern sky would be the stars of Canis Major, for example Sirius, and very high up in the sky you'd see the constellation of Gemini. That would be the highest uh, zodiacal constellation at midnight on January 1st. What if you go back in a month or a couple months? Well, if you go back on March 1st at midnight and you look high up above the southern sky, you will not see the same stars. You'll actually see that Leo is the constellation that is highest up above your southern horizon at midnight on March 1st. Why is this the case? It's because the Earth moves in its orbit around the Sun and it takes uh, time for it to do that. In one day you really won't notice the change of the stars uh, say at midnight or at any other time uh, of the night. What you will notice is that the stars appear to rise and set but in order to see which ones will be highest at a particular time, uh, it, it takes uh, several weeks and months in order to notice, notice this. So the Earth orbits the Sun, and at different times of the year, Earth's nighttime side points to different places in space. How long does it take to go all the way around one time in its orbit? Well, you probably know one year is 365 days, and that's one orbit around the sun. And if you could face the sun and see the stars behind it during the course of the day, well, the stars that would be behind the sun during the day are part of star patterns or constellations that are called the zodiac. And there are 13 constellations in uh, the zodiac, so the sun passes through all of them during the course of an entire year. This is a diagram that comes from the lecture tutorial on seasonal stars and what we're seeing here is uh, the Earth, a person, not to scale, standing on the Earth, the axis and uh, uh, orientation of the uh, rotation of the, of the Earth shown. We also have the Sun and the Earth's orbit. And then, surrounding that, we've got the uh, stars representing the zo uh, zodiac, and those are the stars that the sun appears to move in front of over the course of an entire year. And so, what we've got shown right here is a person standing at a particular moment in that, in that year when uh, they can face out into space and see a particular constellation. So let's talk about this diagram a little bit. First of all, what direction is this person facing? Well, if you look at the diagram, you'll see that the person has their nose and their arms and their, their whole body is facing away from the North Pole of the Earth. If you're facing away from the North Pole, then the opposite direction of that is South. This person is facing South. And then what time is it for the person shown on the Earth? Notice that they are a complete 180 degrees away from the sun. If you're facing directly at the sun, that would be local noon. And so the time for this person facing directly away from the sun has to be midnight. The next question to ask is what constellation is highest in their sky at the moment? Well, if we just follow the arrow, the dashed arrow pointing out to these stars, we find the constellation Taurus is the uh, star pattern that is highest up above their southern horizon right now. What about the constellation that would appear to be behind the sun on this particular day? Well, if you were this person, then on this day, if you face to the sun, I'm just going to draw, take my cursor, move it from the earth to the sun, and if I keep going, 
then the constellation that would appear behind the sun would be Scorpius. And so if I'm this person in 12 hours, I'll move to the opposite side in this orientation. In 12 hours, what constellation will be highest in the sky? Well, 12 hours after midnight is noon. And well, the Earth is not going to move almost at all in 12 hours in its orbit. So it'll basically be in the same place. So when this person goes a complete 180 degrees on the Earth in its rotation, they'll be facing the sun, and the constellation that will be highest in their sky is Scorpius. So on this particular day, where Taurus gets high up above the southern horizon at midnight, a question we can ask ourselves is, what time does Taurus rise? Well, it's highest in the sky at midnight, and we assume for constellations like the zodiacal constellations that they spend about 12 hours above the horizon, going from somewhere on the eastern horizon and setting somewhere on the western horizon. So if Taurus uh, spends a complete 12 hours above the horizon, that means it's going to take half that time to get to highest in the sky, or about six hours. So six hours before midnight would be 6 p.m. And that's the time that Taurus rises. What about in one month? In one month, what constellation will be highest in the sky at midnight? Well, the Earth takes an entire year to go all the way around its orbit. And at each step in its orbit, we'll be, if you're on the Earth, you'll be facing out at a different place in space when you're facing away from the sun. Notice how we've got an arrow showing the direction that the Earth is moving in its orbit. So in this uh, perspective view, it looks like it's going uh, counterclockwise. And we're only showing uh, 12 of the uh, zodiacal constellations here. Which, and you can, for, for our purposes, you can think of uh, it taking roughly an equal amount of time to go from one constellation to the next. It doesn't really work out like that, but for our purposes here, we can think of it like that. So in one month, the Earth will have moved a twelfth of the way around in its orbit, which means the, the nighttime side of the Earth will be pointing out towards Gemini in space. And so if you're on the Earth and you face the southern horizon at midnight, the constellation that will be highest in your sky then will not be Taurus, it will be Gemini. Which means, one month later than the time that's shown in this particular diagram, will Taurus rise earlier, later, or at the same time? Well, for Gemini to be highest in the sky in one month, Taurus will have to be a little further on in the sky. It'll have to be more west than Gemini is. Which means, in order to get to that point by midnight, it would have had to risen earlier than, say, 6 p.m. So one, in one month, Taurus will be rising earlier. Let's talk about that just a little bit. So here is a view of what that person would see in kind of a horizon diagram view. So we've got south into the diagram, east over on the left, and west over on the right. Taurus is high in the sky. Just to the right or to the west is Aries. And just to the left or just to the east is Gemini. Remember, what constellation will be highest in the sky in one month? Right, Gemini. So let me ask this. If Gemini will be highest in the sky in one month, where will Taurus be? Well, it should just be a little bit to the right or a little bit to the west. So what constellation will be just on the western horizon or just a little bit above it in one month? Right, Aries it'll look like this. So see how in one month Taurus is further towards the west at midnight, which means in order to get there it had to have spent more than six hours to get from the eastern horizon all the way over into the western part of the sky, which means if it's midnight right now, well if we go more than six hours before midnight that will be earlier than 6 p.m. when Taurus rises.
So this is that situation, which is a month after the diagram that we saw before, Taurus has risen earlier. In order to get to that point, every day from the moment that we saw before in the previous diagram, Taurus has to rise just a little bit earlier, and a little bit earlier, and a little bit earlier, probably just a couple minutes earlier than it did before on each successive day. And that happens because the Earth moves just a little bit in its orbit, going and pointing at different constellations.